Some of you guys were interested in knowing how I color grade my videos and sort of get an understanding of what my workflow looks like. So that's precisely what we'll be doing today. All right, before we move forward to the tutorial itself, I like to say a few things about color grading and color theory in general. And this applies to anyone, any artist, any designer. And I think knowing this sort of a background for, of colors will help you guys get a better understanding on how you can treat your videos and shots to what you have in mind. So basically the color theory consists of four to five categories of how you can complement colors and how you can use colors together. So we have something like monochromatic that is sort of taking a single color tone uh, and you've seen examples in probably Blade Runner and movies of that sort. And then we have the very popular complementary, which is what Sam Calder videos look like and some of the major Hollywood films look like, for example, Mad Max. And then we have the analogous, which is sort of using the same tones that lie next to each other to sort of give a harmonious look to the film. So there are a lot of, lot of these ways you can apply colors and uh, sort of get a better tone and not something that's jarring to the eyes going through a bit there are a lot of guides you can find online to get a little bit of study of this so that you know where you need to focus on um, your colors and how much you need to tweak so that it's not to the extreme nor does it look very flat my color grading process is generally done with premiere using lumetri color but a lot of you ask me why i don't use da vinci or should they go for it or not? Now the thing is, DaVinci Resolve is sort of like a node-based color correction system, while Premiere Pro is layer-based, right? And I've all, I've been used to Premiere for so long that I do not find the need to get into DaVinci Resolve. But it is a workflow that a lot of you like, and it's it's a much efficient workflow compared to the layer-based techniques. That being said, it's up to you because there might be a learning curve to get into Resolve, but once you're comfortable with any of the software, the color grading processes are the same because at the end of the day, these are all editing suites and I don't think they lack in one aspect or the other. It's up to the editor, the one behind the table who gets the work done and how you want to kind of achieve it, you know, with what techniques and how, how you want to go forward with it. Now that being said, let's get on with the tutorial. Now here I have a shot from when I made the intro sequence for Humpy and it's it's not a fancy shot but it has skin tones and it has a lot of green and a contrasting sky so i thought it'd be a good shot to test out and uh, see how the final look of it is achieved so my workspace has been modified efficiently so that i have only the tools that i need because i have a small screen i'm using a laptop and generally when i have a color grading work i use another monitor but as of now i'm just going to use my laptop screen now you can see two scopes on the screen and these are some of the most important scopes that I use personally to achieve the look that I want. One is a waveform and I am using an RGB waveform, you can use a Luma waveform but essentially they show the values of the blacks and whites in your uh, image. You have to make note that you do not cross the black below zero and you do not cross the whites above 100. So my sweet spot is usually between 5 to 10 for the darkest parts and around 90 to 95 for the, the whites. Now let's come to the one on the right. Now this is a vector scope and this deals with color. It deals with the entire spectrum of colors that your shot has and it shows you the signals from being the center being gray and the points you see on the line out being the maximum saturation the line you see around is the broadcast limit and you should always make sure that your colors are under it and the line the 45 degree angle on the left is the skin tone and that is where all the skin tones lie and whenever you see a shot with skin Make sure whatever grade it is, you do not destroy the skin tone and you always bring the levels of skin onto the line and you do not go either to the left or the right of it and that way you have the most accurate skin tones in a shot. So we have two processes generally in color grading which is the color correction. So when you have a certain number of shots, color correction makes sure that every shot is in sync, sort of cohesive and they are not really uh, drastically different. So color correction basically controls the way the image looks, the blacks and the whites and the saturation so that every shot is sort of in harmony. 
and the next step is color grading where you add the artistic tones to your colors to achieve the look that you're going for so the first thing that i always do is get the right white balance because it's not every day that you have the perfect white balance directly from your camera your first step is going to be to use the eyedropper tool to find the most white spot in your uh, shot so that the tool automatically corrects the white balance for you if not you can fine tune it using the temperature and the tint sliders but make sure that you do not go overboard because images can look drastically different if you play with the sliders too much once you have that the key is to use the waveform as we spoke of before and try to get the perfect blacks and whites for your shot so which means you don't go too overboard on the blacks neither the whites and you fix your shadows and highlights the way you want them and you can also so whenever you usually shoot on log your your color depth is also sort of desaturated so you can use the saturation to bring them back the next step is i usually use an s curve to bring back my uh, depth of the image because I, when I usually shoot it's on neutral or on lock profiles so bringing back the shadows and the highlights is very important and the S-curve does it and since you already played with the basic color correction tools you do not have to um, go overboard with the S-curve and one signature thing that I like to do all over even with my images and my videos is to crush the blacks and the whites a little bit just because they are, then they don't end up being the truest blacks and the truest whites i can influence the colors of these darkest shades in in a more artistic manner so yeah that way you have even more control over the colors and the final look so that it, it's it, it becomes a little more personal to you once you color corrected your footage now comes the color grading aspect and for this we will primarily use uh, the hue saturation curve which is relatively new to premiere otherwise it was a sort of a cumbersome task to kind of get an artistic look using a lut or something of that which can drastically change colors but right now the curve has so many new improvements which makes it so much easier to manipulate colors to the ones that you are looking for now in this particular shot i want the greens to be completely sort of almost desaturated and a very um, dirt earthy texture so that's why i'm going to play with these uh, curves which is the hue versus hue hue versus saturation and hue versus luma curve so i'm going to use the eyedropper tool pick the color green and then manipulate it as desired these curves are exactly what it says now hue versus saturation controls the saturation of a particular tone in the image while the hue versus hue changes the hue of the selected tone and also the hue versus luma increases the brightness and darkness values of that tone color grading is not really linear and it's not like once your correction is done you don't go back you should always keep going back and forth to find the right shadows and uh, darkness based on what changes you do afterwards so that you always have like a clearer picture and you're getting to the final goal so once you've done this process we head on to the color wheels and color wheels is a really interesting tool to add the tone that the uh, a larger feel to it so basically the warms or the blues or how your shadows and how your highlights are going to be so tweaking the tones over here makes a big difference or to the overall color of the image in this particular shot I'm, I'm looking at it to be very moody so i'm going to pull the highlights the shadows and the midtones to the blue of the wheel the vertical sliders help you decrease or increase the luma of the said tone so you can bring down the shadows or increase the brightness of the shadows and so on Keep in mind that when you're using the color wheels you tend to destroy the skin tones and HSL secondary is a really good tool to sort of mask out the particular tone of the skin and bring it back to the way it was or to have a rather better look to your skin. So you can start by using the eyedropper selecting the tone of your skin and then you can enable the mask so that you see what you're working with using the sliders fine tune it to completely mask out the skin. 
and once you have a good selection you can use the denoise and blur to do a considerable amount so that you get rid of the artifacts and you have a smoother selection of your skin. The next step is to correct it by taking vector scopes reference and bringing the colors back to the skin tone line. I usually only use the single color wheel but you can also use the tricolor so you can fine tune the highlights and shadows as well but that is up to your preference. One important feature of the Lumetri panel is that you can have multiple instances of the effect so that you can further kind of fine tune every aspect of the color in your shot. So for example, I'm going to make an, an instance of Lumetri and just uh, use the HSL secondary to mask out my, my shirt and sort of bring it to a color tone that matches with the, the background. Right now, as of now, it looks a little out of place, the blue, so I'm going to fix it to bring it back to what I think is a more cohesive color, color scheme. So I'm going to finally add another layer of Lumetri so that I use the S-curve and bring a little more depth to the shot. Bringing up the black level on new layer of Lumetri kind of adds a bit of the faded film effect. So this next step is really additional and you can only do it to stylize your look even more and generally people use the black pro mist filters to add this sort of a vintage and um, this bleeding effect sort of what we usually call as bloom as well. Um, so I generally do it for some of my shots and I, I will show you the process for that as well. So essentially you make another copy of the video and add a luma key and fine tune the luma key so you, you um, filter out only the highlights in the uh, in the shot Since in this particular shot even the shirt has a bit of highlight so I'm going to mask out only the sky and uh, ignore the, the details of the shirt. Once you do that you, you use a Gaussian blur to blur it out to the required amount while generally if it's a daylight shot you can always use the blend mode screen and then control the opacity to your liking but uh, right here since it's a moody shot i wouldn't do any blend mode on it i would just rather use the gaussian blur and keep it at that and yeah after all of this uh This is typically my workflow for every shot and at times it might be a little different but this is a process that I usually follow and I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Let me know if at all you try this on some of your shots, tag me so that I see. Alright the lights out, I think it's the perfect time to end this video. Thank you guys for watching, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment and like this video and yeah. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video.